Welcome back to the ECB Wrestling Talk channel, your main source for wrestling news and wrestling discussions. I'm, of course, your host, Alexis Carrillo, and it's going to some wrestling talk. Now, last night, it was Impact Wrestling's biggest pay-per-view event of the year, Bound for Glory, taking place from Chicago, Illinois, and it was quite a memorable event for Impact Wrestling fans worldwide. Now, one thing that I want to get out the way and just want to clear the air on is the fact that due to economic reasons, my own budget, I was not able to shell out 40 or 50 bucks, however it was, to actually purchase the pay-per-view event and view it. So, this entire Fallout video is just going to be me talking about the results. However, I can afford uh, an Impact Plus subscription, so while I was uh, following the Fallout of Bound for Glory on Twitter live, I was also catching Bound for Glory 2018, last year's event, on Impact Plus, so I had some fun, even though I wasn't watching the actual live stream of the pay-per-view, so I just wanted to get that out there. And now let's get right into what actually happened in the pay-per-view. Let's start with one of the negative points that has been bugging Impact for quite a, for quite a while, and that is their uh, production value, because it seems that... Last night, Impact Wrestling had a few uh, signal uh, errors or signal headaches with the pay-per-view. Not to mention that this entire weekend, both their Friday event and their Saturday event appeared to have also, uh, uh, you know, a missed signal. They were rumors were that they were uh, shooting uh, one of their events, either Prelude to Glory or All Glory, with uh, Josh Matthews' cell phone, live streaming with a cell phone. So, again, not a good image for Impact Wrestling. But, you know, it's going to happen. Impact Wrestling doesn't quite have the budget to level up on in terms of competing with AEW, WWE, or NXT for that matter. But they got to have a better production value than they do right now. Once they start on Access TV, because you can't, you just can't put out this image to the public. With that said, let's get right into what actually happened at the pay per view. We had a couple of debuts during the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. Two very uh, famous, beloved independent stars made their debut at Bound for Glory. Well, one made their debut and one made his return. Of course, Joey Ryan appears to have signed a multi-year deal with Impact Wrestling. He made a, his return to the company at Bound for Glory for the Call Your Shot Gauntlet pay-per-view with his trademark, uh, I believe uh, it's called a dick suplex. Uh, I saw that again on social media, so looking forward to seeing what he's got to offer for impact in the next few weeks and in the next few years. Hopefully he stays uh, on for the long run. And I'm pretty damn excited about impact bringing in someone like Kylie Ray into the knockouts division. Because, let's be honest, the knockouts division right now needs some freshening up. After the, after the botched return of Rosemary, who appears to have aligned herself with Tile Valkyrie instead of what they should have actually done, which would be actually pitting Rosemary versus Tile Valkyrie for the knockout title, which is what, at least in my opinion, most Impact Wrestling fans want. And of course, the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match was won by Eddie Edwards, that crazy SOB won his right to challenge for any championship of his choosing in the future, I frankly want him to challenge for the world title, and I called it. I called it. I called that Eddie Edwards was going to win the whole damn thing. You know, it, it didn't even matter that he had to start the match at number one. He won the whole damn thing. Moving on, Taya retained over Tino Dashwood. Again, another prediction that I called. One of the few that I called of the actual pay-per-view. And that's pretty much all I, all, I, all I can say about that. Simply, like I said, I didn't watch the pay-per-view, so Taya Valkyrie retains. And I'm happy about that because she can actually become the longest reigning knockout champion in history. Then we got the Triple Threat Tag Team Match. Of course, the North retained their titles. Again, called it. However, I didn't expect them to pin Rich Swan. And, and the team of Rich Swan and Wendy Mack to do so, I thought their rivalry, their feud had a little bit more gas to it. It still might. We still have to wait and see. But there's a good reason as to why, and that is that 
for the first time, at least in my view, for the first time since 2006, RVD has become interesting. For the first time since 2006, I actually want to know what's next for RVD, for Rob Van Dam, for the whole effing show, because he made such an unpredictable move last night when he turned his back, when he turned heel against his former partner, Rhino. Now, RVD versus Rhino, not looking forward to that, but a heel RVD versus any of the top baby faces on the Impact roster? Hell, oh, I'm excited. I'm excited as hell. Moving on, Elgin. Michael Elgin defeated Marafuji in a singles match that apparently, apparently, blew the roof off the place, blew the roof off of every single uh, stream that had purchased the event because, from what I read online, both Michael Elgin and Mara Fuji kicked the living hell out of each other. It, it seems to me that it was pretty much a strong style New Japan Pro Wrestling match on an Impact pay-per-view, and I could not be more thrilled about that because Impact Wrestling right now has that niche audience. They have that hardcore wrestling audience, and I assure you, every single fan that paid to watch the pay-per-view, both in that uh, arena in Chicago, Illinois, and in the U.S. who paid for it on pay-per-view are hardcore wrestling fans, and they all love this match if it was true that it was hard-hitting and strong-style Japanese. So moving on, Ace Austin became the brand-new X Division champion in this, what was it, five, six-person ladder match where we got uh, the brand the brand new uh, signing for Impact Wrestling. AC took a hell of a bump. I saw that on social media. One hell of a bump just one night after um, after he had signed the multi-year deal with the company. He's made famous by you know having that big drop from the top of the ladder all the way to the floor right next to the barricade. So. Good on that. That was a memorable moment. And I called the fact that I, I believe Tessa Blanchard was going to win the X Division Championship because I believed, I still kind of do, but I believed that Impact Wrestling was going all in on Tessa Blanchard being in, in, in the intergender and against men's competition. And she got quite close. She was touching that X Division title. She almost pulled it down. Before Ace Austin just dropped her, like we've seen so many times in previous ladder matches all over the world, Ace Austin becomes your new X Division Champion. I just hope that Eddie Edwards doesn't cash in his uh, championship uh, title opportunity that he won at, at, at during the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match against Ace Austin with his whole entire feud involving Alicia Edwards. So let's just hope for the best. Eddie Hold on to that title shot. Challenge for a world title. Moose defeated the dangerous, the most dangerous man alive, Ken Shamrock, who I gotta say, I'm surprised, put on quite a good showing again. Gotta be clear, all via social media. I saw him take some nice bumps for a man his age, for a man returning into physical competition. I don't believe he's he has, he's, he has a an active physical uh, competition career, so props to Ken Shamrock, and Moose goes over goes over Ken. That was the logical move. You gotta put over a guy that's gonna be with your company for the next few months, for the next few years, and that, my friends, is Moose. And I wouldn't be surprised if Moose gets a future world title shot against Brian Cage, who retained against all the odds the Impact World Title in the main event of Bound for Glory. He retained his title. One thing that tells me, one thing that tells me is that Impact Wrestling is really putting all their chips on the machine, putting all their chips on Brian Cage being the face of the company with this win, because I honestly thought they were going to go with Sammy Callahan becoming world champion and having OVE lead Impact into the future. And as much as a fan of the Sammy Callahan character that I am, I hope they don't pull the old 
mainstream media move where Impact Wrestling for their debut on Access TV has a rematch, a Bound for Glory main event rematch for the world title between Cage and Sammy Callahan and you have Callahan go over Cage for the world title. I honestly hope they don't do that. Again, that will get people talking. But if you were going to do it, you should have done it at Bound for Glory. And in return, we got one hell of a moment. Cage got retribution on Callahan after Callahan after what Callahan did to his wife, not once but twice, on Impact TV. And then we had that beautiful closing moment where Cage hoisted uh, Melissa Santos on his shoulder, and that ended the pay-per-view. Such, such a poetic ending for the Battle for Glory pay-per-view. Such a callback to Macho Man Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth. So with that said, that's the uh, entirety of what happened at Bound for Glory last night. Again, I didn't watch it. This is all via social media. This is all after the fact with the results right here. These are all my thoughts. And all we have to look forward to now is, you know, about 10 days from now, maybe 9 days from now, Impact Wrestling makes their official episodic debut on Access TV. Access TV. Yeah. So, can't wait for that. Can't wait to see what they're going to go with towards in the new year. So with that said, that's the uh, Battle for Glory 2019 follow-up pay-per-view. What did you think of the event? Did you purchase it? Did you watch it? Did, were you like me? Did you just follow it via social media? Oh, one last thing. One last thing. Almost forgot. Talking about poetic. How about that pay-per-view coming in January for Impact Wrestling called Hard to Kill. Hard to Kill. Poetic, a company that pretty much over the past six years has been on death row time and time again. They're going to have a pay-per-view in January called, called Hard to Kill. What do you think about that, Nate? Leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions in the comments section below. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you dislike this video, hit the dislike button. My voice is going, so that's it for me. Till next time.